Добрый день, уважаемые друзья. Hello. Рад вас приветствовать Dear friends, welcome to the Gaida Forum. Ну, Traditionally, this forum opens the business year, and we are dealing with the most topical, most urgent, uh, most relevant issue. This is a very difficult time, and thank you for making it to the Gaida Forum at this most difficult time. We have a very difficult topic at hand now. So how can we defend the intellectual property rights for pharmaceuticals, for medicines? So let me introduce my guest, Mr. Fesenka, the Minister of Health, and Grigory Ivlev, a chief of intellectual property in Russia, known as Rospatent. We also have online speakers. Uh, Shannon Klinger, who is a vice president for legal and corporate uh, and the member of executive committee at Novartis. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you. Коллеги, вступительная часть о формате дискуссии. Introductory remarks. I will first give the floor to every speaker on our panel. After that, we'll open up the floor for discussion, and we'll have two very challenging issues on our agenda, and we'll also um, have an opinion poll, and here's a question for the poll. What is the main obstacle for development of innovation in pharma industry in the Russian Federation? So please vote, and then we'll discuss your responses by the end of it. So we have difficult issues at hand, and this is a very challenging, a very controversial issue particularly at a time of the pandemic. And so this is what we want to talk about. So let's talk about the situation in Russia, and I'll give the floor over to you. Then we'll talk about the situation in the world, and we'll give the floor over to Shannon. Uh, challenges and obstacles. Because a crisis is always both time of impediments and time of opportunities. And we'll also be talking about a very hot topic about production permits and authorization. Let's start with a broad picture. The broad picture in the Russian Federation. Grigory, please tell us about this. So what's the status, what's the situation about safeguarding intellectual property rights in Russia? What are the impediments and what are the opportunities? Oh, dear friends, traditionally, we are discussing the pharma industry, the Gaidar issue, for several years in a row over the past year. This year, the discussion format is somewhat special. And of course, we need to safeguard intellectual property rights for pharmaceuticals. This is something that concerns every Everybody, and the major international pharma companies in the world, and even nations and countries are investing huge funds into the development of new medicines. And uh, after they are developed, developers receive preferential treatment from governments across the world to produce and market are new technologies and new medicines. And this is a huge impetus incentivizing our developers to invest in the development of new drugs to safeguard our health, public health. So that, that this Asia is acquiring a huge international dimension. So please take a look at the applications of pharmaceuticals. They are, are filed by major countries of the world, China, United States, South Korea, Russia, Canada. They are all well represented. And for many years, we see that the number of applications for pharma products has been getting smaller all the way until the year 2020. This chart, this bar chart, demonstrates statistics up to the year 2019. The situation in 2020 is different. We have 1,575 applications in Russia, which is more than the previous years. In Q1, 
Well, the number of applications grew by 23 percent. And was it not for the pandemic, this upward trend would be even more pronounced. However, well, there have been so much research in medicine, and it is it's essential that these developing efforts are carried out across the world, and we expedited our data exchange between patent agencies in the world, both in WIPO and BRICS, and we have a very good understanding of uh, what efforts are made to curb and control the pandemic in the world. All countries of the world have introduced expedited consideration procedures and verification procedures. We all want to have uh, good new products on the market as soon as possible. And I am proud to say that the Russian vaccine was the first to be brought to the market. And the Gamalaya Institute developed that vaccine in a very short period of time, and we managed to have it registered over than others. And we believe that we are offering a very efficient, effective product. It's so good that there are so many applications. Well, here are the data as of late December. We have received 50 more applications as of today. And we can see that these applications are very meaningful. The first vaccine, we, we, we have patented seven vaccines already, because the Novosibirsk Institute, named Vector, also received a patent for their own vaccine, the one that they developed. Well, we have about 20 applications for uh, medicines for that, that is for treatment. And it is so good that they were developed in cooperation with other countries. Other countries were involved in our development efforts, and they actually prompted our developers about the, the borderline issues and the adjacent intellectual rights for therapy and for tests. All patents are new. They're, they're all novel. They're all original. They're all protected by our patents, and we have filed them for international registration. Oh, COVID uh, products. We are making use of developments from other industries. And let me say that we are making use of the IT information technologies, and we're making use of supercomputers to properly design and develop new products, new medications. And this is particularly important when people have to work remotely and when, when, when remote uh, work and work from, all, from home became the order of the day. When they designed a COVID computer and after surveying 100,000 patients, we compared all the symptoms and their evolution. Well, this computer uh, study gave us a good understanding of the course of the disease, of that condition. Tomography is not a universal tool, not a universal remedy tool. However, the very fact that the fact that by looking at the symptoms and uh, oxygen saturation, uh, our uh, doctors can actually diagnose a condition and predict the course it will go to is important. We are using ultraviolet to control the pandemic. We believe that this is something which is very helpful to control the spread of the virus suspended in the air or in ventilation systems. It is very symbolic. Yesterday, sitting in the studio, 
We were discussing our uh, morbidity rates, and Mr. Pugacheva was sitting here and was talked about how we can control the pandemic. What are the available tools? However, so what's the most acute area? Uh, what is the most challenging issue you are facing today? What's outstanding? Uh, well, well, it, 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 it is the court proceedings uh, when there, are, there is some sign of infringement of property rights, intellectual property, that is. Well, there are some patent holders and the interests of society, and there may be conflict between the two, and we need some proper tools to keep that balance. However, we need to set up a farm register so that all parties concerned, all stakeholders know exactly what is protected and what is not. We, this is something we definitely need to hammer out, because we do not need to preclude the design and the production of generic medications and patented drugs. Well, the, fact, the, the, the very business of restricting rights is something which is very well known in the legal profession, but enforcement issues are more complicated than that. So we need to properly uh, structure various licenses and types of licenses so that we could make use of a certain of a medicinal drug to treat the coronavirus without prior consent of, say, of a patent holder. However, these limitations should be used in a very delicate way, in a very, very fine way. We do not want to infringe on overall rights of patent holders, but we also need to have a sway, to have some latitude in making use of the drug to protect public health and protect people. Well, well, well of course there are some evergreen patents and we have some solutions at hand, something we can offer uh, so that they be endorsed by the market. Also, understand that if there is a new substance, a new medication that has alternative uses, this is also important. We need to have the full picture of the pharmaceutical development. We need to properly enforce restrictions and the rights of patent holders. We need to realize that in, uh, uh, in a time of pandemic, all medicinal drugs should be available and accessible to people, and all countries should be able to make use of those drugs without prior consent of the patent holder with the payment of the proper reimbursement or compensation for those patent holders. We are honoring their interests. This doesn't mean that if we say that we do not need a prior consent, that we can do whatever. We do not have a free end. We want to offer a well-balanced approach and offer them adequate and fair reimbursement, uh, compensation, so that the products could be marketed in Russia in sufficient quantities. There are so many rules and regulations. We need to implement them. We need to properly structure them. This is not just blatant regulation. We need to properly to properly enforce them. And this is something the government is busy doing. Thank you. I believe we, uh, we would like to get back to this issue a little later. It appears that digitalization is a powerful tool, a powerful instrument which helps us. Regulations, of course regulations are important, but as you said, well, there's common sense. There are regulations on the one hand and common sense, and there is a power of reason on the other. Uh, let's, let's talk about the global outlook and global approach, and with that I'd like to give the floor to Shannon.
question goes to you. The intellectual rights protection system should be cross-border, no doubt. Uh, speaking about the register launch in Russian Federation, of course, we keep in mind that uh, the following step should be within the Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, you present a global company uh, that operates in the most of the world's uh, markets, uh, including the territories of the unions, I mean European Union, of course. Uh, please share with us uh, your thoughts on the situation with the protection of intellectual property rights globally and what measures should be taken to improve the situation uh, these days. So first of all, thank you very much for the honor of joining this session today. For Novartis, Russia is an incredibly strategic country and it's been very important for us to be one of the industrial leaders and having these important policy dialogues with the government. The intellectual property topic for us is a great illustration um, of how we can work together to bring global perspectives uh, to ensure that we have the appropriate protection for innovation. And of course, for us, it was important as we joined the Foreign Investment Advisory Council in Russia to continue to bring these dialogues forward. If I take a step back, Novartis's global position on intellectual property is fairly straightforward. First of all, we believe that intellectual property rights are fundamental to enabling biopharmaceutical innovation. And we believe the intellectual property system plays an important role in facilitating access to existing medicines by enabling the investments needed to secure approvals and conduct activities that lead to successful launches and use of medicines in countries all around the world including Russia. For us, we believe the intellectual property system is essential to our mission of improving and extending people's lives. When we look specifically at Russia, and as you mentioned, the Eurasian Economic Union, we wanna advocate for fair and transparent regulations and the expedient enforcement of IP rights. And I heard my colleague reference some of this as well. We believe that generic medicines should be registered in, in a, that are registered in a period when a patent is effective should be put into public circulation only with the consent of the patent holder or upon expiry of the relevant patents. We firmly believe that information on existing patents and the dates of putting pharmaceuticals into public, public circulation should be published in a state register of pharmaceuticals for medical use and should be very transparent. We believe state registration of EDL prices for generics within the period of an effective originator's patent should be allowed in a period not longer than necessary to ensure appropriate market entry on day one after patent expiry or earlier if needed with the consent of the patent holder. And we urge court practice on preliminary injunction measures, which exist so effectively already in trademark and domain name cases in Russia, to also be used for patent infringement and to consider, for example, including corresponding guidance into the Supreme Court ruling on IP enforcement to harmonize the approach of all of the lower instant courts on patent infringement. I wanna make a comment on regulatory data protection because we've focused so far on intellectual property and intellectual property rights. But we also see as we go to the full transition of the Eurasian Economic Union registration procedure in 2021, it's critical that regulatory data protection or RDP are agreed by all member states. That they're formally defined in the EA EU regulations for drugs and that they're uniformly applied to again protect the investment and innovation and the true novel treatments that are being brought by so many pharmaceuticals to, to patients around the world. When we think about the harmonization of how does the EU position uh, come into the relevance for the EA EU, um, for me, the role of the Eurasian Economic Union in defining IP and RDP protection is constantly increasing. We would urge to consider developing a broader strategic long-term vision for intellectual property on the EAEU level in order to fully leverage the innovation potential within Russia and without, outside of Russia and ultimately to bring value to patients and economies. We think there are learnings that can be brought from the EU into the EA-EU 
also by thinking about importance of regulatory... Также необходимо думать о важности регуляторной конвергенции. Спасибо. I'm sorry. Let, and, and finally, when we think about the, the Council of EU conclusions, which is the governments of the EU 27 states, I just bring the vision of the EU to this discussion because it sounds consistent with the vision for Russia and the EAEU. One, continuing to stress the importance of a strong, efficient, transparent, and balanced system of intellectual property underlining that IP has become even more important as we just heard in the context of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And we believe it's a key tool to rebuild not just the EU economy, but the global economy as well. And that finally, if we continue to emphasize appropriate IP rights and translate research and innovation directly into positive economic benefit, we think this can have a major role in the reconstruction processes that will be needed as we move beyond COVID and ensuring a healthy, sustainable society. With that, I thank you for the opportunity to make these opening comments and turn it back to you. Dear Shannon, uh, thanks for your opinion, for sharing that. So, and I'm uh, hoping you will stay with us because we will have more questions uh, within the following discussion. Uh, Viktor Sergeyevich. Uh, Victor. Uh, we, uh, our forum is called Russia and the World. Uh, so we've just heard uh, things uh, are in uh, the Russian Federation. You've also heard uh, the position of a global expert. And I see there are lots of similarities there. So indeed, digitization, creating registries is the right way to go uh, to uh, create a solid foundation to protect uh, the IP. And also, as has been rightly said, uh, so that our uh, patients uh, should uh, have the required uh, medication. So how does it look from the regulator point of view? Can you please comment? Uh, again, uh, the Ministry of Health position. According to you, uh, what's already working quite well with us? Uh, what is there in the world uh, that we could borrow? And uh, wh where do you see priorities in terms of improving uh, the situation uh, with the protection of IP uh, in uh, pharma and in healthcare? Thank you very much. Indeed, uh, it's both easy and difficult uh, to speak after two uh, such a clear uh, and uh, substantial uh, interventions, uh, both from Russia and uh, from and internationally. And you're absolutely right. Uh, there have been a lot of similarities that we've heard. I would like to note the following today. In the Russian legislation, we already have uh, quite a lot of regulation. That's the uh, federal law uh, on the circulation of uh, uh, medical uh, substances. Uh, it's uh, about the rules of uh, uh, using information uh, during the clinical tests. Uh, we have a ministerial uh, decree uh, referring uh, to uh, restrictions in case uh, of the existing uh, patents right where the supplier will guarantee that the products they're supplying uh, is under no uh, constraints or limitations. Uh, what else would I like to mention? I uh, fully uh, support uh, the idea uh, that the registry of uh, uh, pharmaceutical substances uh, should uh, be uh, put together Together. It's uh, an absolutely uh, necessary uh, tool and it must be used during the registration procedure. I, I fully agree and welcome uh, the term uh, digitization. Uh, it's an absolutely right uh, thing to do, but uh, we have to understand that it should not be digitization uh, in the form of transferring uh, paper uh, to, dig uh, to uh, digital formats. I understand digitization uh, by, uh, as a way uh, to provide a much better uh, structure uh, to the information uh, that uh, we have uh, so that uh, we could work uh, with information in a much more effective way. As uh, to uh, fast access, yes, of course, uh, the first option, the first stage is a patent, and it's already been uh, discussed. Of course, it's already a great achievement of the Russian Federation that in 2020, 
Uh, the first uh, coronavirus vaccine uh, was uh, issued and patented, uh, but the next uh, phase is for it uh, to be registered. And here, uh, the role was played by the fast tracks uh, that were uh, introduced in the legislation. Uh, firstly, uh, they were issued as paper documents, uh, as the law and regulations, and then uh, they were implemented in practice. And that's why we were the first uh, country in the world uh, to uh, first register these document uh, these um, uh, vaccines and also make them available for the public and they have uh, it uh, by the way covers not only uh, the uh, vaccines developed in Russia but also imported vaccines because we created an absolute level field uh, for uh, these uh, uh, vaccines uh, to be registered and uh, admitted for circulation in Russia uh, what else I would like to say in conclusion of my uh, brief intervention? Uh, there's no doubt, uh, both today and tomorrow, uh, the topic of a mandatory licensing has already been discussed. It's perhaps uh, one uh, of uh, the most, one of the hottest themes. Why do people discuss it? Uh, the reason is that it was indeed the first case, but it's uh, by far not the first case in the worldwide pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and here I fully support uh, our foreign colleague uh, in uh, that there should be two components uh, in making such a decision. decision. So if uh, we've decided uh, to allow someone uh, to use uh, the uh, active patent, it should be an absolutely uh, legally valid decision. And the fact uh, that on the 31st of December, uh, Russia uh, decided to use this procedure. It was absolutely legitimate. Uh, this uh, right uh, was included in the Russian legislation, not today and not yesterday. And so there was a certain procedure uh, proposed. And again, uh, the pandemic uh, is a situation uh, that uh, uh, went uh, far beyond uh, the standard. And many countries have already done that. So we have passed this way together with our colleagues from the uh, Federal Anti-Monopoly Service. As, and only after the negotiations and uh, after we used uh, the remedies uh, that uh, we uh, could that could bring uh, us uh, uh, from uh, using this measure. So we had to go this way. And by the way, the company uh, was already aware uh, that this uh, was going to be uh, what was going to happen, and they uh, already understood that if uh, Russia uh, was not able uh, to uh, get uh, their voluntary uh, consent, uh, so they had every remedy and uh, measure uh, in uh, the legislation to do that, uh, to save the lives of its citizens. Well, thank you for this. And actually, uh, this is exactly uh, what uh, I would like to discuss, uh, the mandatory licensing. Let me uh, give you uh, two uh, cases. Timofey Nizhogorodsky, uh, 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 was uh, planning to join us, but unfortunately he couldn't. I'll uh, cite uh, his uh, predecessor, uh, deputy head of the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service. He said, had I been a libertarian and I heard uh, about uh, the definition of licensing, I would go and hang myself. This would sing, think, uh, this would seem as something going against uh, the uh, foundations of uh, uh, economics, uh, but uh, the government's role uh, is to protect the rights of its citizens. And this is exactly uh, what it's all about. Uh, the second quote is not exact. I just have it in my mind, the gist of it from President Putin. He said, uh, we Russians have uh, this um, special demand for fairness, for transparency. So, Georgi, in addition to what Victor has just said, uh, tell us, please, how transparent should this process be? Uh, because, indeed, while preparing for the discussion, uh, we can see that uh, before the new year, before the 31st of December, uh, when uh, this uh, decree 
uh, came into force. But because a lot of things are happening transparently for you and not so transparently uh, for everybody else, how open should this process be? Uh, actually, it's, uh, the question goes to both of you, dear colleagues. How transparent it should be and what uh, should be uh, available to everyone uh, from the viewpoint that those who want, they uh, learn on other people's experience. I mean, so that uh, this experience could help uh, companies uh, to uh, make conclusions and adjust their positions. Uh, the entire patent uh, process is built on the principles of openness. So what is a patent? Is uh, It's a fact that we're providing a privilege uh, to someone uh, to use something that nobody else in the world has done. So this is about openness of all uh, uh, invention uh, for the uh, uh, humankind. And this principle of own openness is the definitive principle and the, it's the foundation of everything that's being done in uh, science, research and technology. People are striving uh, to be the first ones uh, to come up with something new. And in the, the pharmaceutical interests, it's about saving lives and improving people's lives. And when uh, it comes uh, to uh, the right of producing something uh, without the consent of uh, the IP owner. Uh, it can only happen in those cases when there's a, a direct uh, threat uh, to the life and health of uh, the people. And here we see uh, that in the pandemic conditions, uh, there are no complaints about that. Everybody understands uh, why these steps are uh, taken uh, regarding uh, the uh, medical uh, preparations and substances uh, that can't get uh, to the users. And uh, by the way, coming back to the, uh, to, to the procedure, uh, the first step is always a request uh, to uh, the IP owner. So the procedure couldn't run without this. And we see uh, that in this particular case, all these conditions were met. Uh, even uh, the uh, amount of remuneration uh, was uh, assessed. The whole procedure was based on transparency. Uh, to uh, determine the scope, uh, how much uh, you're going to pay to the IP owner, and then uh, you'll understand if it's fair or not fair. And of course, uh, there are uh, judicial procedures uh, that uh, also allow uh, an opportunity to get uh, additional remedies. Uh, and all these uh, amounts uh, are uh, based uh, on ass assessing uh, royalties and other uh, remedies uh, in normal practice. But I mean, uh, in the situation, uh, we don't know uh, why uh, foreign companies don't allow, uh, don't give their consent uh, to produce uh, these uh, this medication in Russia. Maybe they just don't have the capacity, whereas Russia has this capacity not only uh, for uh, its own population, but also for uh, other countries' population. Uh, uh, who other than uh, Russia, uh, Switzerland, uh, Germany, and other uh, countries uh, with a well-developed pharmaceutical industry, uh, who, uh, who will supply uh, those third countries uh, with uh, these uh, medicines? Uh, the government uh, has no interest in the profits uh, that companies will derive from producing uh, these uh, medicines. Uh, what the government is interested uh, is the uh, availability, accessibility, and the quality of the medication. Uh, the technical result uh, has uh, been studied by several patent uh, offices around the world and confirmed. And uh, if uh, we do it under the mandatory licensing uh, process, uh, additional oversight is required. The 
problem problem of openness is not only about uh, accessibility, uh, but it's also about the uh, oversight and control that the Ministry of uh, uh, Healthcare and other agencies uh, uh, provide. I'm sure uh, that uh, as part of this interaction, we'll provide a complete protection of the rights of the IP owner. And uh, it is absolutely nothing uh, like a claim uh, to, uh, you know, uh, get away, uh, to, um, uh, to just renounce uh, the whole idea of IP. Uh, even if uh, we were to think about that, that would uh, uh, go uh, completely against uh, the interests of uh, fighting the pandemic, especially uh, as applied uh, to uh, providing the medication to uh, other countries. Uh, well, we've heard uh, the uh, statement of the World Health Organization. Yes, back to that. Uh, we need uh, to uh, fully work. Uh, through the question of availability and accessibility of uh, the medicines and the effectiveness of the uh, constraints and limitations uh, that are available uh, in the current legislation. Uh, but uh, we shouldn't uh, give up uh, on uh, this uh, tool. Uh, who knows what other challenges uh, the humankind uh, will have to experience unless uh, we stimulate uh, the uh, incentivize the f investment uh, for the future or we'll never be able to prepare. Uh, uh, the thing is that the uh, pharmaceutical industry has been developed, uh, developing in Russia and the Soviet Union for many decades. Case. And the Gamaleya Institute has uh, uh, been working uh, for a long time and has labs. There are five millions, uh, million uh, of uh, virus strains uh, stored uh, in the repository. Uh, so uh, the protection of inventors' uh, rights uh, is a very important thing. Uh, so every invention uh, is uh, an expression of the top uh, intelligence. Uh, and it has to be protected. Uh, we are now sure uh, that it's the uh, intellectual property uh, that uh, uh, is uh, the best way uh, to uh, fight uh, the COVID now. And it's also the foundation uh, of the fact that we guarantee uh, producers, uh, Russian or international alike, uh, that will protect their rights. Our procedure is accelerated now. Why accelerated? Uh, because uh, by having gone uh, through an accelerated uh, expert review and uh, issuing a patent, we gained the right to publish it. This is now happening in three, three to four months. Uh, it has never uh, been happening uh, this uh, quick uh, worldwide. And we now see that uh, this thing has been uh, supported by the entire patent community. I've taken part in our uh, discussions with all the patent offices around the world, and we now confirm that uh, legal protection uh, is done at a very high level. Uh, at this point, uh, Shannon, uh, at this, if, you're, uh, if you're hearing us, I would like you to jump in. Uh, so uh, could you please add on some more thoughts on uh, what could be the uh, course or, uh, for the clarification of the process uh, uh, we're just discussing? So what could make it more uh, clear to uh, the manufacturer? Thank you for the question. And, and I think we can all agree that this is a situation of, of paradox and mm -hmm. polarity. And what do I mean by that? I don't think any manufacturer would disagree with the proposition that my colleague laid out that in exceptional circumstances where public health is at stake, there is a role to be played by compulsory licenses. Um, but even in a case where one sees a public health emergency as we're living in now, we would argue that not only does, is the legal clarification critically important to innovators to make sure that there is trust in the system for the innovation that has happened and will be ongoing, but proper engagement to figure how do we use the manufacturers even uh, better to be part of the solution. And that our view is that there is almost always an opportunity to work with the innovator um, to provide an outcome that may even be better 
than a compulsory license. We've seen in, in the course of this pandemic, unprecedented cooperation and collaboration between and among the pharmaceutical industry and, and with respective governments. I've never been prouder to be part of this industry or prouder to be a leader at Novartis. And I think that that means for all of us continuing to lean in to the dialogue, the public-private dialogue that is critically important to ensure access for patients, to solve challenges like manufacturing and production together, and to try to do it in a way that respects the critical importance of intellectual property while balancing the needs of the state, ultimately to ensure that patients have access to the medicines they need when they need it. Thank you. Коллеги, мы подходим к завершительной части. У меня есть the second, uh, unfair competition, 23 percent. The uh, third, uh, limited market, so you can't scale up, almost 20 percent. And uh, difficulties uh, in attracting investment, we thought it would uh, be higher, but actually it uh, was 16 percent. Uh, Victor, can you comment and the overall conclusions? Yes, thank you. Вполне, наверное, для меня ожидаемо и привычно. I think the first reason uh, imperfection of the legislation uh, came as no surprise to me. But uh, being aware of the problems uh, that exist in other industries and countries, I would like to say that I've probably never heard an opinion in any country uh, so that uh, somebody would say uh, that our health care and pharmaceutical education legislation is perfect. No, it's uh, too sensitive a topic, both for businesses and for rank and file citizens. Second point, legislation. Any regulatory framework is living organism. Uh, they can only strive uh, to be perfect. So in this respect, we're absolutely open to the dialogue uh, with uh, both our producers, I mean domestic producers and international players. We're prepared to change. And the year 2020, in terms of both the scope and number of changes in regulations was a perfect proof of that, uh, that uh, we are prepared to change and we can change, perhaps uh, much faster than we had thought before. Thank you, Grigori. I think that uh, the biggest hurdle uh, is unfair competition and the, the interests of uh, those unfair pharmaceutical companies operating the market, and of course uh, the lack of funds. Uh, when uh, they're talking about uh, li the limited market, uh, they're saying that uh, the uh, medicines are too expensive and are not affordable. As to the regulation, I don't think uh, it's a big problem. Of course, you have to address uh, regulatory issues. Firstly, uh, to create the pharmaceutical registry and as Shannon says, as part of the uh, Eurasian unit. Uh, we have submitted such ideas, but unfortunately our partners uh, in uh, the Eurasian uh, community have not supported. But I assure you uh, that uh, we'll uh, build and approve this registry uh, as a Russian document. We already have an instruction from the, go uh, from the government, and we're going to do it very soon. And I'm, ho I'm hoping that our Eurasian colleagues, when they see it in operation, they will join us. So, in conclusion, I'd just like uh, to thank you for having found the time to join us. And I would like to wish all of us, all of us uh, that just like the vaccine, uh, we could start uh, this uh, registry being the first ones to do that, so that we should do it smoothly, considering the previous experience. Because we know that digital tools, uh, are, uh, they are tools, uh, but you need to learn to use them correctly. So I know about uh, the government instructions to both of your organizations. So I wish uh, that both of you succeed in implementing it and so that all of us uh, should be healthy. Uh, dear colleagues, thank you very much. Let's be healthy.